Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Anton off to as usual and today I've got another World of Tanks review lined up for you guys. Today we'll be looking at the Black Prince Tier 7 British Heavy Tank. So in the tech tree we can see that you get it from the Churchill 7 and leads up to the Carnarvon and really the Black Prince is the last really typical British heavy tank because you've got the Churchill 1, the Churchill 7 and then the Black Prince and they all play out quite similarly but after tier 7 you get the Carnarvon and with the Carnarvon you get a totally different class of British heavy tanks and that also applies to the Conqueror and the FE215B because all these tanks have got uh, better guns, more maneuverability but less armour and the thing that all these three tanks here have got in common is massive armor, kind of very bad maneuverability and top speed and very rapidly firing quite accurate punchy guns but without much alpha damage. So yeah, um, the Black Prince, I'm, I'm not actually quite sure if I like this tank. I mean it's alright, I've had some fun driving it actually. I've also had quite some horrible games in it. So yeah, I'm not sure. It's not my favourite tank, probably. But, you know, it's not horrible. So, yeah, let's have a look at the stats. 1,450 hit points. That's amazing. That's the most health that any tank has at tier 7, along with the German Tiger 1. And it weighs 50 tonnes. So, that's actually very heavy. And I think, except for the Tiger 1 and the Tiger P, that's probably the heaviest tank at tier 7. Although the T29 is also heavy, in fact the T29 weighs around 60, but still 50 tons is really heavy, so you shouldn't try to ram this vehicle. It's got quite a powerful engine of 600 horsepower, but driving a 50 ton tank, that's not very good. And I'm not quite sure what the power to weight ratio exactly is, but it definitely isn't very good. This tank doesn't drive very quickly. The top speed is 20 kph which is really slow I and mean, that's one of the slowest top speeds in the game. Actually only the TOG and the T28 prototype are slower than that I believe and maybe the T92 or something I'm not quite sure but it's it's not a quick tank. Now um, if you know the TOG actually the Black Prince is very similar to the TOG but it, it actually moves a lot quicker. The top speed is quicker and is more manoeuvrable too so I'm quite sure that the power to weight ratio is a lot better because the TOG is a lot heavier but they've both got the same engine and generally you can say that the Black Prince really is like a TOG only it's smaller, it's better armoured and it's faster moving so yeah that's really cool. And the traverse speed is 20 degrees per second which may not sound like a lot but Considering that this tank moves that slowly, the traverse speed is actually alright because you don't need great traverse speed for turning corners because you won't be having lots of momentum anyway in this vehicle. Now, if you're getting circled by enemy scouts, that's a totally different story and hull traverse can be a bit of a problem. But if you combine that with the turret traverse of 30 degrees per second, which is actually really good on this vehicle for a heavy tank, then you should usually be able to keep up with your enemies trying to circle you. So so next we're going to talk about the armour and I've specially downloaded tank view for this occasion so yeah let's have a look at it. So here we are in what tank view and I know that we always used to use tank inspect for these kind of purposes but the problem is that somehow since yesterday tank inspect isn't working anymore on my computer I'm not quite sure why. If any of you have got the same problem please tell me but uh, I've been trying loads of different things and it's just not working. So um, that's why I just quickly downloaded what tank view for this review because the armour actually is quite important of the Black Prince. Now if we looked at frontally we can see that actually it's quite well armoured. We've got this bit of armour which is 240mm thick around the gun mantlet and uh, down here at the turret ring and then also this gun mantlet which is 240mm strong right here. So you do not really want to be firing at the turret because even this, this um, armour zones in between the gun mantlet and this uh, outer casing here are 152.4mm thick. So really you want to be shooting at the hole down here because usually you will not be able to penetrate the frontal turret in a tier 7 vehicle. Now um, this armour plate here is also 152mm strong but it's a lot easier to hit than these little bits of armour on the turret which are 152mm. And it's it's got no angle on it so usually you should be able to penetrate it. However, if the Black Prince driver decides to angle his tank about like this, what you should absolutely do in your BP 
then that will significantly increase the effective armor thickness. And you will usually be able to bounce Russian 122mm guns with 175mm of pen quite easily if you angle your attack about like this. Now, the lower glacius uh, and the machine gun port, and I think this is the driver's port, but I'm not quite sure. Um, anyway, all these are at 139, or uh, you could just well say 140 millimeters thick, so they're a bit easier to penetrate. And if you're engaging this tank frontally, then the lower glaciers is definitely the place to go for frontally. Or, of course, if he's face hugging you, which is quite a viable tactic in the Black Prince, then uh, you could always try to go for an MG port. Now, um, there are also some other frontal armor zones, like for example, this zone right here, which is actually 58mm strong. Now, 58mm is quite good actually, considering that the angle is as extreme as it is, and the same thing applies for the top of the turret. Now, this does away with a problem which the predecessor of this tank, the Churchill 7, has, and that is that uh, on the Churchill 7, I think, this armor plate, as well as this one here, were only 20mm strong or something like that, and that meant that it's guns with a calibre of 60mm or higher could overmatch these armor zones and just easily penetrate usually. That isn't the problem anymore here because you need a calibre of 150mm or higher to overmatch these armor zones and you usually won't be engaging enemies with those kind of calibre guns except for maybe an ISU-152 say. So yeah that's quite good news, however you've still got this 19mm armor zone up here which can be overmatched by 60mm guns. But really it's not a real target except for if enemies are say on a hill and aiming down on you. And when we're talking about aiming down on the Black Prince, for artillery this tank here is just really really easy to kill. Look at this, it's all 90mm of armor on the, on the top. So really if you can land an artillery shell anywhere on top of the tank, you'll usually absolutely wreck the Black Prince. So obviously also you've got this commander's cupola up here which I believe is... Yeah, it's 90 millim uh, 95 millimeters. so usually frontally you can penetrate that as well, and it's not really big, and it's kind of, in the game, it's kind of quite difficult to hit, because um, if you look at it like this, there's quite a lot of stuff in front of it that obscures your vision, but uh, still that's also a viable way to penetrate this tank. Yeah, if we look at the tank from the sides, we can see that they actually are all quite flat and easy to penetrate. Uh, you've got this in these 90mm armor zones. And then we've also got, I believe that's 20mm, yeah. However, these uh, things here, these track cases, are actually just spaced armor. And behind them, there's another armor layer here. So what that means is that if you hit these green armor zones, see the 20mm zones, that counts as spaced armor. If you hit the 95mm armor, armor zone, that's actually not spaced armor, that armor goes through all the way. So really, probably it's easier to penetrate the 95mm armor zone in the middle, rather than the 20mm armor zone here, because behind it there's another 95mm armor zone. So yeah, that's what I would recommend usually. From the side of a turret, well, it's quite easy to penetrate, and because your side armor actually is quite sturdy in the Black Prince, you can afford to angle your tank nearly 45 degrees which will really increase the chances of bouncers because really, unless you give the enemy a side kind of this kind of angle, they won't be able to penetrate usually. So yeah, this kind of angling is absolutely sufficient. Um, from the rear, we can see that there is not much armor. I mean, the turret is actually quite sturdy from the rear, but the hull really isn't, and anybody can really put shots through the rear of your hull. So yeah, that's kind of the armor of the Black Prince. It's can be quite good, but you really have to angle it because there's not much sloping on it. It's kind of similar to the armor of the German Tiger One, say, only that the Tiger One's armor is quite a bit weaker than the Black Prince's. But yeah, so that was it for the What Tank view, and let's head back to the garage to review the rest of the stats. So, 370 meters view range is average for tier 7. It's not bad, but it's not good, it's just really in the middle. So, that's alright, and 700 meter signal range is superb at tier 7 as well. So, that's very nice, and that's basically done us for the stats. So, let's quickly look at tactics in this tank. Now, really, in my opinion, there are two main ways to play, and it really depends on the map and your matchup. Now, the Churchill 7, like the two tanks before it, really likes to be top tier. If this tank is top tier and has to fight against T29s, ISs and KV1Ss and stuff like that, uh, then this tank really owns the battlefield. But if it's in a tier 8 or 9 game, 
Not so much. So you have to really adjust your playing style to your matchup and the map on which you're on. Because also, this tank doesn't really like open maps as you could maybe think. Because yeah, it's slow, it's quite a big target, and basically it's quite prone to outflanking. So yeah, um, how to play this vehicle. If you are top tier, then I would always recommend to play this tank super aggressively. You have to basically be your team's meat shield, kind of like a breakthrough tank. You've got massive hit points and quite good armor. And the gun really suits that role too. So you have to be in the front line and just keep on pushing and pushing forwards. An ideal example would be, say, a tier 7 game on Himmelsdorf, where you head to the heavy street and basically just keep driving down that road and just keep on firing... Oh, by the way, um, I just realised that we forgot to look at the gun, so I'm sorry for that. Uh, we'll just quickly take a look at the gun, and um, after that, I'll continue with the tactics, so I'm really sorry for that. Um, yeah, so basically, if we look at the research tree, we can see that you've got God's choice of two guns, both of them are tier 7. The first one is a gun that you get on the Churchill 7, so the stock grind is not too painful in this tank. And then you get the... Um, QQF 17 pounder and this gun is really interesting for a heavy tank because it's kind of a gun that you would usually expect to see on a medium tank and not on a heavy so let's take a look at its characteristics it gets a rate of fire of 12 which is absolutely amazing for a heavy tank and a penetration of 171 millimeters which I believe is the worst penetration of any of the tier 7 heavy tanks now facing tier 7 tanks or lower that's totally enough if you know where to aim, but if you have to engage tier 8 or 9 vehicles, that can be a major issue. Now luckily, you've got your APCR ammunition, which gives you quite a penetration boost. 239 is really good, uh, and you'll be able to slice through most tanks armor with this penetration. So I would always recommend loading a few APCR shells in case you find yourself in the worst case scenario, for example facing tier 9 vehicles. Now, the alpha damage is for me the major problem with this tank because it is only 150 hit points and that is the worst alpha damage of any of the tier 7 heavy tanks. So, really, for example, you have to shoot your enemies twice to do the same damage as a T29 would do with one shot. And even the Tiger 1 does an average uh, 90 or 100, I am quite sure it's 90 damage more uh, with one shot than you. And, uh, you know, we don't even have to start to speak about the Russians, like, say, the IS. I mean, you know, the IS gets 390 alpha damage, so that's significantly more so this is a real drawback and it means that you really have to set your dpm to work catch your enemies out in the open without cover and really just spam them with your gun to just make that damage add up and um, if you don't manage to do that then you won't have a very good game in this tank now it's got really good accuracy of 0 0.34 which is probably one of the best at tier 7 along with the tiger 1 and so on that's, that's actually exactly the same accuracy that the tiger 1 gets so that's really good news and it gets a aiming time of 2.3 seconds which in my opinion for a 76 millimeter gun on a heavy tank at tier 7 is actually quite disappointing i would expect something better because uh, the tiger one with its 88 millimeter gun actually gets the same accuracy uh, the same aiming time i think so yeah that's actually quite a letdown in my opinion yep yeah, so that's um that's kind of it to the gun, so let's come back to the tactics, I'm sorry for that kind of uh, brain fart that I had there. So, yeah, what I was saying is that um, if you are in a great matchup on a city map like Himmelsdorf, you, would, you should really push down the heavy street and just basically don't stop, but just uh, keep on hammering your enemies with your great DPM. And also a good option is to go hold down behind rubble, say, because your turret armor is significantly better than your hull armor. However, you have to always bear in mind that this tank actually hasn't got very good gun depression, so that can be a problem. Yeah, so that's kind of the way I would play this tank in a good matchup on a city map, uh, which is just being the team's breakthrough tank, being your sp the team's spearhead, just, you know, getting stuck in and you have to really be continuously firing this gun to keep the DPM up. If you don't manage to do that, it's a fail game really. So yeah, that's the first tactic you can use. Now the second tactic that you should apply in open maps or if you're in quite an ugly matchup, say a tier 9 or tier 8 game, then you should play this tank in a support role. And the reason for that is because 
in a tier 8 or 9 game, your armor doesn't really count for much. And your hit points don't either anymore. So if you get caught up front, you will basically just get absolutely obliterated by those tier 9 and 10 guns. So what you have to do is you have to stay back in the second and third line. You've got sniping accuracy and decent aiming time. So you have to stay back and support your allies with consistent long range fire and never ceasing fire so just keep that gun firing at long ranges and i mean if you don't penetrate the first time you will may penetrate the second time your rate of fire is really good so yeah that's kind of the way i would play this like for example in the map like redshire you do, do not just throw yourself into the first line and basically um just sacrifice your entire health because it won't help your team a lot because in a tier 9 or 8 game your health doesn't count for a lot so uh, stay in the second line or third line stay behind some bushes and just snipe and that's the best thing you can really do in that kind of game now to maximize your performance um, you should definitely get a vertical stabilizer and a tank gun rammer those are the two pieces of equipment you definitely want to have in this tank for third piece of equipment the choice is really up to you you could get uh, improved vents or toolbox and maybe even coated optics. I wouldn't get binocs because really in this vehicle you do not want to stay stationary all that often because your top speed is so slow that uh, you know if you stop for once then you fall behind the, the first line where you really want to be in for example a tier 7 game. So in my opinion large caliber tank gun rammer vertical stabilizer and then for third piece of equipment toolbox or vents it kind of depends on how you want to play this tank in a support role vents is better or coated optics it depends on your choice and in an aggressive role toolbox so yeah that's kind of it and um, one thing that i forgot to mention uh, when i was talking about tactics is i just kind of um touched on that a few seconds ago is the slow top speed and bad maneuverability means that you really have to choose where you want to go well in advance because once you're committed to one flank you basically can't change your mind anymore so maybe one good idea especially if you want to play this tank in a support role is to let yourself fall behind for um like your allies maybe uh, half a minute or so to see how your team is splitting up and then go there where you're most needed uh, because really you cannot relocate in this vehicle anymore once you've made up your mind so for crew skills it's quite straightforward you definitely want to have repairs on your entire crew that's an absolute must have once repairs reaches 100% on your commander I would trade back for six cents then go for brothers and arms on the entire crew and uh, after that you could get stuff like recon or situational awareness to enhance your view range and I would definitely go for stuff like well probably on the driver I would go with clutch braking because clutch braking will really help you to avoid circling maneuvers by scouts that encounter you also smooth ride would be good and then for your gunner, I, I'm quite sure I would probably get snapshot. And on your loader, yeah, on your loader, actually, adrenaline rush would be quite a good idea because you've got a lot of health or safe storage. It's basically up to you. So, yeah, that was it for the garage. I hope it could give you a good overview of tactics and uh, crew skills and, you know, the characteristics of this tank. And that's head out to the battlefield to see how this tank performs in, well, not really real life, but, you know, out there where it matters. So, um, yeah, here we go. This is our first game on Kamarin, and I'm obviously my Black Prince. Uh, <laughs> and this is basically a dream matchup. Well, not exactly a dream matchup, but uh, it's a tier 7 game. There are lots of tier 7 tanks, fair enough. So it could be better, probably. But still, we should be able to do quite well here. Now, um, so here's an enemy Panzer 38 NA. Take a part shot at him. I'll just quickly turn my graphics settings down a bit because the frame rate's quite awful. Uh, let's see if that helps. I really need to get a new recording program. I somehow, like, usually I've got a frame rate of 50 FPS or something, and as soon as I start recording, it's like 13. So, <laughs> yeah. So, um, right here, you can see me being super aggressive. And I actually, this is actually what I didn't recommend for doing on open maps like Kamaran, but uh, you can see that if you've got some cover available, like here, this tactic can actually be quite effective. 
So I'm just being like really aggressive to say no, but usually this IS-2 here shouldn't stand much of a chance of penetrating my turret frontally. But you can see that I in turn also have to go for weak spot, because otherwise I don't stand much of a chance of penetrating him in turn. So, um, see, yeah, finally I get the penetration again. And now he's retreating. Come and guess. Oh, no, I don't. I tried to snipe skip hold of her. But, um, yeah, so you can see that this tank actually got kind of a low profile. Well, not really low, but, you know, medium. Like, I can't. It's not quite big enough to, uh, to poke my gun over these undulations here in some situations. Uh, so, I mean, over this, kind of, into this, through this window here, because the undulations on the ground. So, I'm very lucky, setting the IS-2 on fire, and you can see that I'm perma-tracking him by repeatedly hitting his, and I put him on fire again! Haha! <laughs> so, <laughs> that was two fires in a row, picking up my second kill there. And I'm going for blow glazes of the Tiger one. So, yeah, that just really shows what you can do with a great rate of fire for Black Prince. And in some shit, shit, shit sorry, in some situations, um, in which you maybe um, can't damage your enemies, maybe in tier 9 games or such, then you can at least support your team by, for example, perma-tracking allies, allowing your teammates to take them out. So that's also a very good option, and that's something that your Great Race of Fire really allows you to do. So I'm just deciding to come round here, really, but then I spot that PZSFL 4C. So I decide to take a shot at him. And really what I should be doing now is I should really be lo loading HE probably, because if that guy would poke out round again, then I could one-shot him. But on the other hand, then I would be kind of not very effective against that Tiger one. So I put one shot in, he misses me, which is quite lucky. Because he's probably one of the few tanks on the enemy team that can really hurt me. I'm just trying to get that angle right, and there's our second shot. You can see this painfully low alpha damage here. And that shot just widely misses. Come on, I, I, this is just basically... Um, I'm just really trying to get at him, but it's kind of difficult. Because he really doesn't want me to get at him, obviously. And <laughs> there's the PZSFL again. But see, and there you can see the advantage of this amazing rate of fire. We were able to get him uh, before he was able to retreat into cover. I mean, fair enough, if I wasn't an IS or something, I would have one-shot at him straight away. But, <laughs> you know... Um, so there's a second shot, and this guy's basically down to really low health. Let's see if we can finish him off. And this IS wants to have a kill too, so we have to hurry up. Ah, uh, what a shame. Well, you know, never mind. The Hellcat got him in the end. So we're on three kills. Now that Hellcat just got absolutely wrecked by a PZSFL5 with that amazing 128mm gun. So I have to be careful here because obviously we are spotted and we're under heavy fire. Although maybe now we're not spotted anymore, maybe that was just like the, the three seconds that you remain spotted after you've even killed the enemy that um, was spotting you. So I really don't want to risk driving through this river here, because if I do, then maybe <laughs> I will drown because this tank's too slow to come up on the other side again. In time, I'm not. I'm not sure, but I really don't want to try it out now because I'm having quite an alright game. So let's see if we can. Right here, you can see the really good long-range abilities of the Black Prince. I mean, obviously, just when I say that, I fail. But um, really, uh, the long-range firing capabilities of this tank are quite good. So I decide not to go over the bridge because that would expose me unnecessarily to enemy fire. So I decide to uh, to ford this creek here. You can just see how painfully slow this vehicle really is. So, that one bounced. Yeah, fourth kill. That's more like it. Can we hit that cape? No, we can't. And oh my gosh, what's that? We've been spotted. Okay, let's get into cover quickly. Uh oh. And I was wrecked by Varty. Okay, that 
that was... I think that IS must have spotted me when I fired, and then they just knew where I was and kind of blind fired me. So, yeah, that was a shame, but still, that was kind of quite a nice game. I think it really showcased what you can achieve with very aggressive play in the Black Prince. I mean, obviously, it's kind of a high-risk, high-gain kind of gameplay, so it can happen that you just get really obliterated in the first two minutes of a game and don't get much out of it. But in turn, as you can see in this game, I mean, it wasn't awesome, but still, you could see that I could really kind of carry my team through that flank and kind of nearly push into the enemy base. And I, I think we won this game, actually. I fear I haven't got the post-game stats anymore. But, um, yeah, that just shows what the Black Prince can do, even on an open map with aggressive play. So, if it can do this well in an open map, that's how it does in its natural environment, a city map. So, this is the game I was promising on Himmelsdorf, and, um, yeah, you can see this is a confrontation game, a tier 8 matchup, which is not very good for me, really, but, uh, yeah, we'll just see whether we can make the most of it, and, <laughs> you know, I really, this is probably one of the very first games I played in 8.11, because I really hate confrontation mode, and I turned it off directly, uh, and, you know, just look how unfair this is, and look at all our Centurion 1, like, we've got, we've got 1, 2, 3, We've got three tier 8 tanks more than our enemies. I <laughs> mean, that's not really fair. So, yeah, here we go. This is um, an IS-3 we're encountering. He puts one shot through us, obviously, against a BL-9 gun. Our armor isn't worth very much. So I'm not being too aggressive here, because I know that if I push in now, then I'll just be hopelessly outnumbered by all those enemy Russian heavy tanks. But this Centurion's being quite aggressive, and I'm thinking about helping him out now, because if I've got backup, it's another different story. So, yeah, I'm moving in. So another great thing that I forgot to mention is that the Black Prince has got amazing on-the-move accuracy, because it's um, because its speed is so low. Now you can see me putting shots into the rear drive wheel of that IS-3, keeping keep him trapped for the Centurion. And then I put another shot in and the Centurion kills him by his fire. So that was that. And um, then now we're going to go after that KV-2. Now I, you don't really want to be encountering a KV-2 in this tank because uh, the KV-2 really doesn't care about your armor because he's just got all the HE rounds. However, uh, the damage that he will do to you is actually lower than um, he would to other tanks maybe because your quite thick arm, raw armor thickness really protects you from that HE splash damage and he will very seldomly penetrate. So, I'm just going for his lower plate over time and basically one shot more and he should be dead. Really, now I should have gone for the side of his turret there, but uh, yeah, I was just too unflexible in that situation. So, that was some weak play by me, really. It could have been that I bounced, because I didn't quite have a gun depression to hit his lower plate flush. Now I'm uh, taking on this IS, and if you're engaging these Russian tanks with 122mm guns, it's always like you're never quite sure whether they're going to penetrate or not. It's, and maybe they're firing premium ammo at you, you never really know. Sometimes they're pens, sometimes they don't. It's like a 50-50 chance. But the great thing is, if they don't pen, then you've got like four shots at them before they've reloaded. So right here you can see how important it would be to have a great repair crew and uh, a toolbox on this vehicle. Because I'm getting trapped all the time. And one thing that I also forgot to point out is that you can actually perform some quite good side scraping maneuvers in this tank. Now our great uh, accuracy allows us to quite easily snipe that cupola of IS at uh, over 150 meters range I think. So that was quite nice. That KV-1S fired so we know that he has to go through a nearly 15 second reload time now. As you can see our enemies have managed to flank round and they're actually in our base now so that's not very nice. The score's 4 to 6. I'm just aiming for the center of mass of his turret there because there's not much of it showing. That shot bounces, but you can see that our good accuracy, even now, lets us quite easily hit him. And that's something that you maybe couldn't do in, say, IS or something. 
You can see that KV1 S there, because of its long aiming time and bad accuracy, misses us all the time and we just chew him to bits with it. Now what I would do probably in, if I was just IS in this, uh, this KV1 S in this situation is I would load a premium round just to take me out when I come around the corner, so I have to be quite cautious. But it doesn't seem like he's using premium ammo because he bounces. So, um, yeah, that means I can really go in and just hope for the best. Now, usually I should be able to kill him before he reloads, hopefully. But because I paused there, I'm not too sure. And, and yeah, very fired, okay. So, but now I know that I can kill him quite easily. But I bounce! Okay, so it's on now, isn't it? Come on, one more shot. Come on, reload, reload, reload. Going for his machine gun port, and there we go, third kill. Okay, great. But now there's an enemy behind me at IS-6, and I have to run, because I know that I can't really engage in IS-6. This is armor is just too thick for my gun. So I'm just staying here and cover from the IS-6, and engaging with SC-152, who is apparently using the 122mm gun and bouncing. But then the IS-6 um, comes round and gets me in the end. So, yeah, I got three kills in that game, and basically we lose the game. That's just why I hate confrontation. I mean, look at this. <laughs> the Russian, Russians just absolutely owned us, and strangely, the Russians always win in this game mode. Like, every time. Always win us. Any nation against the Russians, Russians always come out on top. I mean, except for Tier 10 games, maybe. But, uh, you know, especially in Tier 6 games, you know, KV1Ss against VKs. <laughs> I, I wouldn't call that fair. Not balanced at all. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that was that game, and um, let's have a look at the post-game stats to see how well we did in it. Yeah, so sadly that was a defeat, but we performed quite well in that game, picking up forty-eight thousand and sixty-four credits and one thousand one hundred and two experience, and a third-class mastery badge. In the team score, we can see that we came first by far getting 735 experience for loss so I was quite bitter about that because I would have really liked to win that game and I got 3209 damage which is quite nice I think that's maybe the best I did in this tank so far because uh, yeah the alpha damage just really limits your abilities to deal out lots of damage I feel yeah in the detailed report we can see that we fired 33 shots of which 30 hit and 23 penetrated that just shows you how many shots you have to put in to deal out a big amount of damage we received 11 hits, of which 8 penetrated and 3 didn't. So that's quite disappointing, actually. But I think a lot of, shot of those shots were eaten up by our tracks. I'm not quite sure, but uh, that's what I think. Now, strangely, there's some kind of bug here because it doesn't, doesn't say how much potential damage we received. But um, we damaged 5 enemies, destroyed 3, and also picked up nearly 500 spotting damage. So yeah, that's quite nice. You can see also that the ammunition cost is not very high in this tank. But because you have to fire that often, it can really really add up. Still, you usually don't have to pay that much for repairs and resupply and so on. So we walked away from that game with 32,000 credits and 1,100 experience. That's quite nice. And yeah, um, that was kind of all to the Black Prince. I mean, I'm not quite sure what to make of this tank. On the one hand, it's really not the kind of vehicle I like because I like fast, manoeuvrable, flexible vehicles, like medium tanks, but still, in some situations, this tank actually was quite a bit of fun. Now, I'm definitely not going to keep it, it's not one of my favourite tanks, but it wasn't a pain to play through or anything, and uh, you know, if you're on your way, I mean, you know, you really, if you're grinding your way towards the, say, the FE215B, then the FE215B is a totally different tank to this vehicle. And if you like playing the FE215B, you probably won't like playing the Black Prince. But, um, you know, it's not it's not like you have to force yourself to play this tank again and again to grind up the experience. So it's just like an alright stepping stone on the way to tier 8, but it's not amazing. So that's kind of the conclusion for this video. And I hope you appreciated my opinions on the tank. And if you did, consider giving it a thumbs up below or even subbing to my channel. And I hope I see you on the battlefield on one of my next videos, like probably a Yak Panther video coming up. Uh, in two days time or maybe a t21 review i'm not quite sure so we'll have a look um thanks for watching anyway and bye bye